Right, okay, hello, we're online, hopefully. Um, have you seen that latest Star Trek movie? A complete piece of shit, wasn't it? Have you seen the latest Star Trek movie? Have you, have you seen Have you seen the latest remake of Star Trek? A complete piece of shit, innit? Anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, have you noticed how they've just destroyed the analog television now? They've just destroyed the analog television, haven't they? They've completely destroyed history now. They've completely wiped away history. They've destroyed the analog television, so you can't play your videos either, unless you've got a USB socket now. In America and England, I don't know, the rest of the world probably as well, they've just completely destroyed the analog television, which had perfect clarity, by the way, the analog television was perfect clarity. They've completely destroyed the analog television, they've completely destroyed the record player, they've completely destroyed the VHS video, haven't they? Your governments have just destroyed the analog television, they've destroyed the VHS video, they've destroyed the uh, record player and everything. They've completely wiped history away, they've just destroyed our entire history. And that remake of Star Trek was a piece of shit. Absolute piece of fucking crap. So anyway, here's a little story concerning uh, Mr. William Shatner, who's hopefully still alive. I've, I've, I've seen the Shatner thingy. You've got something going. But yeah, um, yeah, this is a little story, but this is for Rick Berman. I've done this twice already, so I'm hoping it works this time. <laughs> This is a little story. It's for Rick Berman, Michael Pillar, and Jerry Taylor specifically. For Rick Berman, Michael Pillar, and Jerry Taylor. It's a little story. I call it Star Trek Resurrection. It's called Star Trek Resurrection. It's a little story for you. It's a sequel to. It's a sequel to. Um, Star Trek Generations. This is a sequel to Star Trek Generations, right? It's called Star Trek Resurrection. Okay? Are you ready? Good. Let's hope it works this time. Okay. The Planet Viridian 3. Stardate 48650.2. Captain Jason Duquesne materializes beside a pile of rocks at the base of a large red canyon. He presses a button on his tricorder and taps his communication badge. Duquesne to relativity, I've found him. Two to beam up. The tombstone on the grave reads, Here lies Admiral James T. Kirk, Captain of the Federation Starship USS Enterprise 1701. Sometime later, in the 29th century, the body of Admiral Kirk lies on a bed in the sick bay. Dr. Darwin examines the corpse. Uh, we are lucky, Captain. The cadaver is still warm. There is no sign of rigor mortis, although he does have uh, some internal bleeding, a fractured spine, and severe head injuries. Fortunately, he has been dead for less than three hours. Can you revive him? asks Captain Duquesne. Um, I've injected the corpse with Borg nanoprobes to reverse cellular necrosis and repair any tissue damage. It will take several hours to heal his internal injuries, but Admiral Kirk should make a complete recovery. Don't worry, sir, I have used a similar technique before. Oh yes, smiled Duquesne. The Talaxian on the USS Voyager. Uh, let me know as soon as you are ready to revive him. Three hours later, James T. Kirk opens his eyes. Uh, good afternoon, Admiral, smiles the holographic doctor. I trust that you slept well. Where am I? asks Jim Kirk. The last thing I remember was being crushed beneath an iron bridge on Bridian 3. I thought I was going to die. You did, frowned the doctor. I resurrected you. The Admiral sat up in bed and raised his eyebrows. You did what? I brought you back to life, explained the holographic doctor. Captain Duquesne stands at the foot of the bed. Uh, it is a great honour to meet you, at last Admiral. The old man frowns. Please don't salute me, Captain, and uh, call me Jim. Now he paused. Would you mind telling me where I am? You are on board the Federation timeship for relativity, explains the captain. What use it, asked Kirk, gazing around the sick bay. Well, this equipment looks very sophisticated. This is the 29th century, Jim. 
explains Captain Decane. Ah, I must have overslept, found Kirk. Admiral Kirk and J Captain Decane stand on the bridge of the Relativity. Uh, why did you bring me back? asked Kirk. Jason Decane smiles. Well, you are personally responsible for well over 17 violations of the Temporal Prime Directive, are you not? Jim Kirk folds his arms. Uh, I wasn't counting his side. Well, smiled Captain Decane. That makes you perfectly qualified for this assignment. The Temporal Prime Directive, Regulation 157, Section 3, Paragraph 18, clearly states that Starfleet officers will take all necessary precautions to minimise participation in historical events. Every cadet in Starfleet knows that, Captain, frowned Kirk. <sighs> Decane sat, da sat down in the captain's chair and pressed a button on his control panel. The face of Captain Leo Braxton appears on the view screen. Frankly, Admiral, we have a very serious problem. This is Captain Braxton, uh, my previous commanding officer. He is suffering from a severe case of temporal psychosis. I'm not a doctor, frowns Admiral Kirk. He escaped from a Federation correction facility on Cygnus Alpha two weeks ago and is currently on the loose. He has been travelling back and forward in time, wreaking havoc and causing several temporal distortions, explains Captain Decane. Admiral Kirk breathes a heavy sigh. I am retired, Captain. Frankly, Jim, we need your help to track him down and repair any damage to the timelines. Duquesne presses a button on the arm of the captain's chair, and a list of statistics appears on the view screen at the front of the bridge. In the past week alone, Captain Braxton has been responsible for five temporal incursions. Analog televisions, VHS video recorders, and record players vanished in a second. Technology was replaced by computers in the 21st century, and Sir Clive Sinclair was almost wiped from the history books. Kirk interrupted, uh, didn't he invent the Sinclair SX-3000 microchip? Without which we would have no replicators, added Captain Decane. Only last week the name of Christopher Pike vanished from all Starfleet records. Ah, I see the problem, found Kirk. Will you help us, asked the Captain. What choice do I have, laughed the Admiral. After all, I do owe you my life. Consider me drafted, he paused. But uh, what about Temporal Psychosis? Won't I be affected as well? The captain tapped his communicator badge, a uh, doctor to the bridge. The holographic doctor materialises next to Admiral Kirk. I have come up with an antidote for the psychosis. It contains a high degree of enoproboline, adrenaline, chronazine and chronexaline, explains the doctor. He's very l clever, laughed Kirk. Did you draft him as well, he asked. I'm a Starfleet officer, sir. I have over 400 years in medicine, explained Dr. Darwin. Are you an android? asked Kirk. No, frowns the doctor. I am a hologram. End of chapter one.